Hello and welcome back to my photography channel. Today's video will be talking about how I take the negatives once they've been processed and turn them into a finished digital image. So, unlike other vloggers, I don't have my own dark room. So, for my needs, I send off all my completed film. I've tried a couple of labs to send my negatives off to be processed, and I've been most impressed with the time, speed and quality of a firm called AG Photographic, based in Birmingham, England. In terms of digitising the negatives that I got back from the labs, I first use an Epson V330 photo scanner to convert the negatives into a digital image. However, I was disappointed with the results. So instead of using the flatbed scanner, I looked around at other methods to digitize my images. And in the end, I settled on using my digital camera and my macro lens. For now, I used the film carrier that came with the flatbed scanner to basically hold the 35mm negatives. This will work well for 35mm obviously and it holds the film nice and flat but it doesn't work so well for Holger medium format um, images which are larger than the standard 6x6 so this is only a temporary solution until I can find something better for my needs. If anyone has any ideas for a better film carrier solution, then please put them in the comments below. I'm keeping an eye out on the Pixel Later carrier because that looks very promising. So as the following images will show, I use the film carrier on top of an iPad, which acts as my light table. I make sure the brightness is set up to 100% and then I also use an application called Trace Table, which I think only cost me 99p, to basically project a single white background light, which I can then lock into place and then not worry about it for the time that I'm scanning images. Like I said, the carrier then goes on top, but it doesn't go directly on top of the iPad because before that happens, I put a bit of diffuser plastic material. So that way, when I take the images, I don't get any pixelation from the iPad. I then attach my camera to the tripod, which I invert to allow the camera and the lens to get as close to the image as possible to make sure I can use the entire 60 megapixel sensor of my camera. I then make sure that the tripod is level and flat so the lens is perpendicular to the image. I then bring up the histogram on the back of the camera and add exposure compensation enough to fill the entire range available. That gives me most latitude to work with in post. And by having more of that range allows me to bring out much more detail in the shadows. So in terms of camera settings, I've found that it's best to set the aperture for my camera onto about f9. I then set the ISO as low as it can, 200 is recommended for my camera. Then I turn IBIS off because it's on a tripod so you don't need to stabilize the camera or the lens. I then set a two second timer and that reduces camera shake at the point of capture. The following footage will now take you through my process for setting up and capturing the negatives in order to then take them into post and convert them. I find that taking the photos is better done in low light away from strong light sources because that way it cuts down the amount of reflections which shine or reflect on the film. So you captured all those images. When you have captured images like this, C41, you then need to convert what they call the negatives into a positive image. 
I've looked at and I've tried a number of different tools, software packages, plugins that will work with my versions of Lightroom and Photoshop in order to invert the digital raw image from a negative to a positive image and produce an image that I'm happy with. A lot of people generally tend to just invert the point curve in Lightroom to convert the negative to a positive, but I just find that produces such a flat image. It just doesn't work as well as I would want it to work. The popular plugin is Negative Lab Pro, which I've never been able to trial because it's not compatible with any of the software that I currently own, and it is quite expensive. I'm sure though, if I had the compatible software, I would definitely give Negative Lab Pro a go because it seems to offer a lot of options that you can kind of tweak the image to how you would want it to turn out. So inverting the tone curve linear point in Lightroom is generally good enough for most monochrome images, but I've never really had that much success with using it for my color images. So I had to find something different so from reading around, looking in various forums, uh, YouTube and um, Facebook groups, I eventually came across a plugin for Photoshop, but it also works, I believe, in other tools, um, called CNMY Invert. There's a really good active community on Facebook which discusses his tool and you can find out how to use it to best effect. Also, it's a great platform for him to discuss with the community what further improvements you would like. So the inversion tool is a Photoshop action which you in effect run and then it converts your image from negative to positive. The software also includes a number of lookup tables which you can choose whether you want to apply or not and if you do choose to apply them you can alter the opacity or the strength or the effect that they have on your image. I believe the lookup tables he's developed are based on the principles of some old laboratory scanners, such as Frontier or Noritsu. I quite like using the Frontier lookup table on some of my images. I find that it kind of just lifts the exposure and the brightness all throughout the image. One thing you need to remember before using this action is that for the best results, you're supposed to linearize your digital raw images. At the moment for this process, I use a program called MakeTIFF. Once you've linearized the file, it converts it into a TIFF format. I then export this file into Photoshop directly. From there, I then run through the CNMY inversion tool. Then I apply any frontier lookup tables that I want to add. Then I also do any major changes like any dust or hair removal. And then I export it back into Lightroom where I complete a series of finishing edits. I may also use ColorFX Pro to make any last changes to the saturation of the colors. I try not to edit the film images too heavily in post-processing as I find if you push it too hard, you can kind of start to lose the the essence of what made the image a film image in the first place. However, I have pushed images really hard and converted some color ones to monochrome where I thought monochrome favored it better when I've needed to. But generally for the majority of images captured on film cameras, I try to just get it to how it was when I captured the image. So to demonstrate my workflow of taking a digital raw image and inverting it into a positive image and then editing it in Lightroom, I'm now going to show you how I do this. I will take you through a digital scan and inversion of both a color and a monochrome image. For the color photograph, I've chosen an image that I took last year during a trip to Dusseldorf, Germany. I had Kodak Portra 400 film loaded into my camera and I just love the way the color was at that time of the day and also the cloud trails crisscrossing across the scene I just thought completed the picture. The first thing I need to do is linearize the original raw file. So this is my original raw file. So I use a program called MakeTIFF. So click and drag it to this dialog box here and then it will run. And then it will finish and you'll see this file here 
So that's the WAR file, and that's the linearized WAR file, which is now in a TIFF format. So then drag the TIFF format file to Photoshop. I'll just do a little bit of crop in here. Right, let's make this a bit bigger. Right, the next stage is to convert this negative image into a positive image. So to do this, I use a series of Photoshop actions called CNMY invert. So it's just a case of clicking on convert normal selection and then hitting play. I'm sure if you wanted to, you could see what this tool is doing and recreating itself, but I'm happy to support the individuals that develop these kind of tools. So there we are, we can see the clear positive image on the screen. You can with some images as well, if you like the look, apply a color lookup table. The one supplied with this tool is called Frontier. So again, you just click on the Frontier selection, press play, and then you find the, the lookup table that you want to apply. And then it applies it. So this is at 100% opacity, so you can change it to what you want. So for this one, I think about about there. So before I take this back into Lightroom, I'll just remove some of these areas that I don't really want in my final image and this object here. To do this, I use the Content Aware Fill in Photoshop, which is very handy. You'll never know it was there. You can use other clone tools as well, but I just find this tool is pretty useful. Just a quick last look around all the edges for any last distracting aspects. Right, I think we're about there. So save it and I'll just import the file I've just edited in Photoshop so first things first take into the develop module and then let's finish the crop right so now what I do is I just go down through all the sliders and just tweak the image to how I think it was when I took this image last year in Dusseldorf. It's film, so it's never going to be as sharp as a digital image, but you can apply a little bit of sharpening. And then apply the mask just so you don't over sharpen some of the other areas. If you hold down the Alt key, that helps you see whether there's any last spots you need to remove. But no, it looks pretty good. Again, this is film, so it's not really any point using noise reduction too much because you want to retain. The, the grain and the noise reduction might take away that. The last thing I'm going to do is take it into Color FX Pro 4, which is part of the Nick collection. As I said on previous videos, I find this plugin brilliant and it really helps make the image come alive. 
So you can see that it's already applied, probably from what I applied last time, a brilliance warmth filter. Um, so if you, if I, this is with that filter added, if I t turn that off, so it's a subtle effect, but it really kind of boosts the colors where I want them to be boosted. And I think that's pretty bang on for this image. The last thing I do is look at what the skylight filter does. Sometimes that helps boost the light. But it's quite a bright image, this, so I don't think I need too much of this. Right, so that's done. Take it back into Lightroom. And there we go. So that was the original image before ColorFX Pro 4, and that's with the effects, which I think really enhanced the image. So I'll just do a few more tweaks here. And I think we're there, that's the, the final image. For the monochrome photograph, I've chosen an image taken with Kodak's Tri-X 400. Again, the image was taken last year in a rural Dorset field where there was a couple of old decaying horse boxes. I quite like decaying images and these subjects really capture my imagination and it's a location that I'm hoping to return to once we can. So again, same process, drag the file to make TIFF. You can do this in bulk and that's what I do, but for the purposes of this video, I'm just showing you one, one at a time. So that's done. So there you've got the the original captured image of the negative, and then here you've got the linearized version of that same file. So now take that into Photoshop. Right, so here we have it in Photoshop. I'll just make it a bit bigger. And then instead of using the color convert tool, you scroll down and select the convert black and white of the CNMY invert tool. Then same as before, press play. Then I'll leave all the cropping to Lightroom this time. Again, same as before, I'll just use the content aware fill tool just to remove any kind of dust or hair in the image. The last thing I'll do here is flip the orientation to get it how it was when I captured the image. There we go. Alright, so save it. So here we are, back into Lightroom. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is go into the develop module and then I'm going to crop it down. That looks pretty good. Right, I think. The editing process has introduced a little bit of a cast, so I will change it to black and white in Lightroom. Now it's back to black and white, I'll go down all the sliders again just to try and bring out as much shadow detail that I want to recover and a bit in the highlights. This is where the histogram and the importance of boosting the exposure conversation when you're capturing the image so you've got more to work with, more latitude to make any changes at this stage. I think that's it, the final image. Here are the final edited images that I've converted from a negative to a positive image today for you. I hope you like them.
Thanks for watching. See you next time.